Hi, my name is Laura Jo Hightower. I write the profiles for the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette, and this week's profile is Dr. Larry Wright. Dr. Wright is a geriatrician. He's been in the Northwest Arkansas area since 1979 when he came as the first uh, geriatrician in the area. He's been working in the field since then uh, for four decades now. He was the founding executive director of the Schmieding Center. He's also worked for Circle of Life Hospice uh, as a doctor and also as a co-medical director. Um, he has just this amazing record uh, of service in Northwest Arkansas. But in addition to that, he is one of the nicest human beings I've ever met in my life. He's warm, uh, he's welcoming, he's just a lovely human being. And after talking to him for an hour, I could certainly see uh, why he's so talented and skilled in his field, a field that requires a doctor to spend a lot more time uh, with a patient on a regular basis. Um, and so I think his interpersonal skills probably are, are a perfect fit uh, for the specialty that he's chosen as a career. He was kind enough to answer some self-portrait questions for us. So take a look at this video. I think um, you'll see uh, the same thing I did, which is just an incredibly warm, thoughtful human being uh, and a real benefit to our community here in Northwest Arkansas. Thanks so much. Perfect. Okay, great. All right, well, why don't we start with, um, oh, this is a, a good one. Um, I want my children to remember. I want my children to remember that uh, uh, I was a person of faith and that uh, it was important to me that my work and my profession was an expression of my faith. Is that um, something that you sort of think about every now and then or... How I, I've had patients and patient experiences that remind me mm -hmm. regularly of this, mm -hmm. and so it's always felt like a calling, and um, and just having the privilege of taking care of patients seems like a such meaningful work to me. Yeah, uh, as it always is. Yes, yeah, so you want that to be something they realize that part of you. Mm -hmm. One word to sum me up. Blessed. A good word, yes. Yeah. Carries a lot of... You know, I've, I've been blessed by, you know, great family, friends, faith, church family, um, and, and have gotten to do meaningful work. I don't think I could be more blessed. There's always a lot of gratitude in that word when people use that. That's yeah. the part I love the most about that word, is the acknowledgement of the gratitude for, for what you've had in life. Um, the person who had the most impact on my life. Mm. A lot of people have, but my father. And my father is a small town general physician. Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I came to understand his devotion to his profession over the period of growing up, but even more so as I, as I came to adulthood myself. And, um, you know, he expressed regularly in different ways and very specifically when I elected to go into medicine that how strongly he felt that medicine was the noblest of professions and that it was worthy of all the um, dedication and devotion you could put into it and uh, and I saw him in, in the practice of medicine in this small town uh, uh, devoted his life to uh, you know, to his patients in the community. And you know, the family in his private time came so secondary. Not that he didn't love his family, and no one ever doubted that he did, but but uh, he was hyper committed to whatever it took, and there was, there was no time when he was too tired to answer the call. And that still amazes me, because mm -hmm. all doctors work hard, and I've, all, I've had much of my career working really long hours, but I don't think I ever reached the 24-7 commitment that he had. Yeah, I remember that story that you told where you, when you shadowed him as a resident and you sort yeah. of said, you know, if they're stable, maybe you go home, maybe yeah. you don't stay, but he had exactly. to see all of them. Right. Yeah. Uh, my most humbling experience was? Well, I think it's a recurring thing that I had a, during my career, but especially on when I was working for a few years 
full time with hospice, and I think the most humbling experience has been when I've had the privilege of uh, being with, sitting with a dying patient. Um, someone at any point in the dying process, certainly in a period of active dying very near the end. Uh, it's always humbling, it's always very meaningful. I, I consider it sacred time, yeah. often very sacred time for families. Uh, I've even, speaking of, you know, expression of my faith, I've even at times prayed with patients, um, and not just at end of life, but, but very important that a physician only does something like that by invitation. Yeah. I think it's also very easy to impose or, uh, impose or to uh, um, uh, invade in private time, and so I, I don't think anyone who's a physician has a right or the need or, uh, yes. to do that except one family or patient asks, yes, yes. but very meaningful and very humbling. When we talked the other day, you said that um, when people heard that you were working at hospice as a hospice doctor, sometimes they would say, oh, that sounds so depressing or sad. Yeah, how can you do that? I yes. just must, you just must deplete you of energy completely. It didn't hit you that way. No, and I usually answer it by saying, you know, there are many things in medicine I couldn't, I wouldn't be any good at. Uh, this is a good fit. This. Uh, it, 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 it seems to me uh, among the most important things that healthcare ought to do uh, for patients at such an important time in their lives um, and, and the lives of their family. And it, um, it's especially at, at a senior point in my career where I've had so many other experiences I understand it in the context of just how important it is mm -hmm. uh, to be there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, and we'll we'll end with a little bit of a light one then. My yes. favorite movie is well, I guess it's going to be light. Let's see what the choice is. Well, it seemed to fit the theme here. Uh, I think my favorite. I'm I'm a movie lover, but I think my favorite all time movie is uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Yes. You know, to me, that movie. Um, and I think about it even more now that I'm teaching full-time. Uh, I've always thought of teachers, they don't know where the extent of their influence ends, the, the ripple effect from the good that they've mm -hmm. done in teaching. Uh, and, and here's a guy whose life, who George Bailey, mm -hmm. <laughs> whose life um, was always, always wanting to be elsewhere. Out of this little town, go do something more important and then in the end, the, the moral of the story is that uh, doing what seem to be small things in small places in great ways is absolutely as meaningful or maybe more meaningful. And, and I just think that's the, some of the irony of life. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it just find it very meaningful. Yes, that is a great movie for teachers and educators, yeah. I think. Yes, yeah. it matches up really well with... With yeah, what you gotta what love you do. that guy. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I lied, there's one more. Oh. Um, my greatest strength for the profession I'm in is? I think my greatest strength is, is having a clear understanding of health as a holistic perspective. Um, that it's not just about physical health, physical wellness, or physical illness, it's about the physical, the psychological, the, the social, and the spiritual. And, and it's when those spheres, those dimensions of life are in, are, uh, in harmony and in balance that we have true health. And it's a much more holistic thing than, than, than healthcare is all often attributed to be. Yes. Yeah. That's a, that's, well, you've certainly had a long career to, to come to that conclusion for that holistic view. So. Holistic. <laughs> thank you so much for answering those questions for oh, us. Thank you, Laura. You, 